What's up, team? Today we're talking about kites. Let's define it first. A kite is a quadrilateral that has exactly two distinct pairs of congruent consecutive sides. Real wordy. Let's break it down. Quadrilateral is any polygon with four and exactly four uh, sides. Uh, exactly two distinct pairs of congruent consecutive sides. Well, congruent means they have the same side length. We know this. Consecutive, um, just like everywhere else, it means right next to one another. So with a kite having two distinct pairs of congruent consecutive sides, that's like looking at these two sides. They are congruent and they're consecutive. They're right next to each other. So we can mark them with these little tick marks. Similarly, the longer ones must be congruent. That's the definition of a kite. Of course, you can picture the kites that you fly in the wind and whatnot. They're shaped like this. They're called kites. Let's name this one. Let's name it K-I-T-E. And we're going to explore some different properties with this particular kite. Uh, one more thing I want to point out is this word distinct. The reason why that's important is because uh, we need two distinct pairs of uh, congruent consecutive sides. If these were all the same length, technically, we'd have two pairs of corresponding sides that are uh, consecutive and congruent, um, but they're not two distinct ones. So there's, with a kite, there's always two short sides, two long sides, and uh, to be simple there. Okay, five properties, and we're going to spell it all out. First property, one diagonal divides the kite into two congruent triangles. So a diagonal is when you connect two opposite vertices. For this one, here we go. I'm connecting I and E as our diagonal here. And uh, the claim here, the property is that it creates two congruent triangles. The one on top, I, K, E, and the one on bottom, I, T, E. We know they're congruent because of the triangle congruence criteria that we've studied previously. We have a pair of corresponding sides that's congruent, a second pair of corresponding sides that's congruent, i.e. They sharing, they're sharing that line, that diagonal. So by side, 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 these two triangles are congruent. So for the example, triangle I, K, E is congruent to triangle I, T, E, I, T, E. That's all this first property is saying, and that's true with every kite ever. Two, diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. So let's drop in the second of these diagonals, and they are going to meet at a right angle. That's always going to be the case for every kite you ever encounter, ever. So to spell that out, we could say that, uh, let's say, angle I, uh, and let's name this right here. Um, I don't know. How about M? I, M, K is perpendicular to angle E, M, K. So I, M, K is perpendicular to E, M, K. That works. Uh, you could also spell this out. It's the same statement, but you could really just say, like, I, E is perpendicular to K, T. These are saying that the line segments are perpendicular. These are saying that the angles are perpendicular. Same thing. Okay, number three. The short diagonal divides the kite into two isosceles triangles. The short diagonal is just like it sounds. It's the one that's shorter. That's the one that connects K to T. So the claim here is that this is an isosceles triangle, as is this one. Uh, let's remember, isosceles triangle means that there are two, uh, two legs of that triangle that are congruent to one another. If we ignore this bigger half and just look at triangle I, K, T, I, T, K, we'll notice that it has two sides that are exactly the same length. Therefore, these base angles are congruent. So this is an isosceles triangle. In the same way, if we ignore the small half and just look at the big triangle here, triangle K, E, T is also isosceles because it has two sides that are congruent to one another. So I'm not going to spell that out over here. I just showed you. Um, that's always going to be true with every kite ever. Fourth out of five, one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So looking at this, kites, um, opposite angles, you have angle I and angle E. Those are not congruent, but these opposite angles, in this case, angle K and angle T are going to be congruent. Um, and so it's where the short side and the long side meet, and then the short side and the long side on the other side of the kite as well. These are always going to be congruent angles. So I'd say angle K is congruent to angle T. Last one, the long diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles.
So that's IE, that's the diagonal we're talking about. And this claim here is that the long diagonal bisects a pair of these angles. So this diagonal is bisecting angle E, it's chopping it in half. It's also chopping angle I in half. It's important to note angle I and angle E are not the same angle, but they're both being chopped in half by the same diagonal. So you notice in my notation, the one we did a moment ago has a single little angle mark here. These have two because these two angles are the same, and these have three because these two angles are the same as well. But angle K, angle I, angle T, uh, angle K, angle I, and angle E are all different angle measures. The only ones that are the same are K and T, uh, like we talked about in property number four. So property five, again, uh, the long diagonal is chopping angle I in half. It's also chopping angle E in half. Hang on one moment. We'll do an example together.